Hello, this is Mel with Five Star Services LLC. We're going to uh, do uh, uh, some oil uh, direction on this and some ray valve installation and some timing on this 787 RFI motor. This is also all the same stuff on a 787 carbureted motor. But uh, anyways, uh, we're going to get started. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the three oil lines that are on the uh, 787 motor. Can you tip that forward, Mike? This, this, this one right here is the, the lower one underneath the intake. That's the return line on the oil reservoir. Or not the return line, I'm sorry, that one is the fill line. The return line is on this side of the motor, which is the left side of the motor as you're standing behind the machine. It's right there. And we've got a cap on it but because uh, we pressure test them. But uh, anyways, that is the return line. That is the first line that you connect to the oil reservoir tank. It goes all the way up to the top of the tank. That's why they call it a return. And then this one here is the fill again. This is your second line you connect. Then the third line you connect is the one on the front of the oil pump, which will be right here once the stator cover is on the engine. Right now we have this engine uh, marked uh, with our disc. We have a disc, a uh, little cheap uh, plastic disc, a 360 degree disc. And we, in my motors, we always mark these so that you can uh, easily install your rotary valve on them. And uh, so we've got this one marked at 147 degrees, and we're going to have the mag end, which is this end, at top dead center. And so in order to do that, move this for a sec. In order to do that, we're just going to use a screwdriver. You can also use a top dead center tool, but most people won't have one of those. And uh, we're going to put the screwdriver in the motor. And the, I can see through the engine port here, the exhaust port, that the piston is all the way up, right? So I'm going to move it a little bit and, uh, you know, let's see, it's going down, coming up, going down. So right there is top dead center. Now, if you notice my hand over here, uh, notice there's like a little, there's like a sweet spot where the, the rod isn't moving up or the piston isn't moving up or down. So you want to kind of find like the halfway point between that little spot where it's not moving up or down. So it's right there and then I'll just move it a tiny bit. So that's at top dead center. We'll take our disc. Now the disc is asymmetrical. What that means is it can be turned over either direction, this way or this way. And this one, I believe, goes this way. And when we put it in there, notice how it lines right up with my 147 degree mark. And so that's the way it should go. And if we had it the opposite way, the closest teeth would always be too far away. See, there it is right there. And then the next tooth is way past it. So you know it's the other side. That's how you can just find out which way is which. Anyways, that's it. We put that on. We have a new O-ring around the, this manifold. A lot of times you won't have to replace these as long as they're sticking up um, above the uh, edge of the rubber. You can see there's plenty to squish there. That's all you're looking for. We apply oil on this. We'll also put oil, two-cycle oil, uh, directly on this area. And we'll smooth that around a little bit. We'll get this all wet. And we'll rotate that and make sure it's good and oiled. Put some more right in here. So we got it good and oiled. Then we will put our, our uh, rotary valve cover on. Put that right here. Any bolt that we put on the engine will have Loctite on it. We'll put Loctite on all, a little bit of Loctite on all the bolts. They're going in. Let me set up for a second there. These bolts right here are torqued at 20 foot pounds. So we'll just spin them in real quick and then work them down. babies setting our torque wrench at 20 foot pounds which this one already is ok 
Okay. Well, that's all set. We'll just spin it around and we'll just, uh, you know, verify that it's still turning very smoothly. The engine is. We're doing all this right here on the bench before we even begin to put it in the ski. The next thing we're going to do is look at ray valve installation. Now, this motor is bored half over. What, we're, what we do is when we bore them half over, we want to take uh, half over bore, which is half millimeters, as the equivalent of 20 thousandths. So what we want to do is take 10 thousandths because we're only going to take half of that because it's half of the circumference of the diameter of the circle. So we take 10 thousandths off of this. We use our fancy boring machine over there to cut that perfectly. Uh, we have a, you know, a, a cylinder set up. We put this in there and we'll push down on this. We'll bolt this to the jug. Tight as it will go, we'll push this all the way down. When it's all the way down, then we'll rotate the motor and make sure it doesn't come in contact with this. Now you at home can do this by just taking a half round file and taking a very small amount of material off of the uh, uh, ray valve paddle, uh, or they call this a guillotine actually, uh, uh, just a small amount, uh, 10 thousandths is about, the, is about half the width of a pack of matches uh, paper. So the match pack is about you know, 20 thousandths thick or whatever, you want half of that, just it's not very much off of here. And then we're gonna double check that they fit all right we're going to install the ray valve. The drain, there's always a drain line on the bottom of the rays. These are off an RFI, so these have a port here that you won't see on a carbureted Sea-Doo uh, uh, motor. But uh, on the RFI, the 951s, and, and a few other ones, they use that port right there. But the drain always goes down as well as the paddle curve here. And so we'll install that. We will put in a couple of uh, bolts here. This uses a 5 mil Allen key. And, oh, yep, we got the gasket in and the gasket's greased. Yes, there's a gasket. See it right there? You have that in. We'll torque this down to 10 foot pounds. These bolts are torqued at 10 foot pounds. We're all set with that right here. Okay, so then what we'll do is we'll hold this all the way down. He's going to hold the flashlight for me. There it is. Here you go. Right in, shine it right in that hole right there. Sorry about that. Anyway, so we're going to push this all the way down. We've already cut our, we know this one is perfect because we use a machine to do it. You're not going to be able to do that. You're going to have to check to make sure that these pistons are in these rings. See those rings in there? I don't know if you can see that yeah. pretty good. Those rings are not coming in contact with that. We'll push this down. We'll push it over this way as far as we can because it wiggles a little bit. See that? And you want to wiggle it every direction possible as you're moving the piston up and down, making sure nothing comes in contact with them. Also, you can take a feeler gauge. This one's 15 thousandths. You can use... Uh, the manual says 20 thousandths, but we actually like them a little bit closer because uh, it gives the engine a little more power, right? So we'll push the piston rings up past the rave valve. There it is right there moving. And we'll push this down, and I can it's still free right there. Just so you, it's, it's like perfect. See, that's just barely touching it. So we like that. Anyways, this one's done. We'll do the same thing to this side. And uh, we'll install it with the paddle up. Paddle always goes up. This goes down. And we'll put it in. We'll double check the same thing on this side for uh, clearance. And making sure nothing's going to come in contact with our rings. So you have to do that on any motor that's been bored more than a quarter over. One quarter over is as much as you can bore an engine without resizing the ray valves. So this one's at half over because we don't like boring at a quarter because sometimes the cylinder won't clean up at a quarter and so uh, we always just shoot for a half on it. Anyway, so we're, we're good to go on that. I'm not going to show you any more on that. We got the timing set. We got the ray valves in. We have, uh, as you explain the oil lines, the first one you connect, 
is the return line on this side. The second one you connect is the fill line on this side. The third one you connect is the oil line on front of the motor. We'll also install a PTO. And how you can do that, this particular PTO is loose, I believe. It's a little torqued down. Did we torque that one down? No? Can you grab that spark plug tool real quick so we can pop that? But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to suspend this off. I'll show you how what we're going to uh, show you how what we do to torque them. But um, anyway, see, find one. Yeah, there we go. Uh, no, not that one. What we've made is this little spark plug tool. All we do is take a spark plug, we weld on a little stud onto the end of it after we busted out the ceramic. We'll put that in the engine. What this will do is it'll block the piston for us. We'll do it on the, always put the spark plug closest to the area you're working, whether it's on the magneto end or the PTO end. Now we'll be able to turn this off, I think. And it's free. So anyways, when we it turns off to the left, okay? These can be a real bear to get off. We'll use a little bit of heat. We'll heat it right here with a propane torch. This is the same size as a prop tool. So if you have a prop tool, or you can use a uh, vice grip, or uh, not vice grip, but pipe wrench uh, gripping it right here to uh, break these loose and a hammer, heat, and a lot of strength to get them apart. But when we put them back in, uh, we'll put these in. We'll tighten it down now. You want you won't have this tool. So what you can use is instead of this tool, is a rope. You get a half inch rope in through this port right here. I'm on the side, Mike. In through this port right here, you can see the piston is above. Can you get a little lower? Is above the. Uh, oh, hold on a second. See the piston right there? It's got a little bit of dirt right there on it. it we want to get the pit. So we're going to tighten it, which would be to the right. We would rotate the motor to the right until the piston is above the ports. Right there it is. Now we would put our rope in here, we would stuff as much as we could down in there, and that will block the piston for you, and uh, it won't. the rope won't damage the rings. That's why you gotta make sure you have that piston above these ports, right in this area. So uh, anyways, then we would take our tool and we would torque this down to 90 foot-pounds, and we're not gonna do that right now because this PTO is our shop PTO. This engine will not be sold with one. Anyways, thanks for watching.